Hello people, thanks for coming to my channel. If you're new here and you like the content you've seen so far, please subscribe and uh, feel free to share my videos. So, um, there's a few things I want to cover here, but uh, before I get to the main issue, um, today, exactly today, marks 100 years uh, since the BBC was founded. Now, I'll likely be making a video specifically about that, uh, maybe tomorrow if I get a chance. Tomorrow, of course, is going to be a busy day um, with the ballots of Tory MPs coming through. So uh, that is, if I get a chance, um, we'll see what happens. Um, I've just watched uh, the last episode of Doctor Who featuring Jodie Whittaker. Uh, I wouldn't describe myself as a huge Whovie and a huge Doctor Who fan. And if I'm being honest, I was only half watching the story, so I wasn't really um, that invested in it. But it was well done good special effects and of course it's a staple of the BBC but it's just kind of a coincidence that the last appearance of Jodie Whittaker is also possibly the um, the eve that we have a new Prime Minister. I say possibly because um, a number of scenarios could play out tomorrow. Edirichi Sunak will uh, by far have the most nominations and he will actually become Prime Minister tomorrow or Johnson will also have secured over a hundred. Um, his backers, like Jacob Reese Mogg, are saying that is the case. The figures published so far are only those public declarations of MP support. Um, Johnson's supporters are saying he has enough to pull through, in which case it will play out to a contest between them. Uh, Penny Morden, um, realistically, she's not going to be the next Prime Minister. I don't see how she could do it. Her campaign has denied that she's in talks with Johnson's team or some sort of deal. Um, it would be interesting, I was just thinking of something earlier, if there was a Sunak Morden card ticket. And um, let's say Morden became, well, I was going to say the first woman Chancellor of the Exchequer, but then again, um, it would probably be mis a mistake to change the Chancellor again when we've already had four this year. So I think it's likely that Hunt will stay in that position for some time. I imagine, actually, all the great offices of state except Prime Minister will remain unchanged because this is an exceptional situation. So, um, Grant Shapps, James Cleverley, and um, Jeremy Hunt will likely stay in their posts. I think Ben Wallace will as well in defence. Anyway, what I want to talk about is this exchange that was on LBC Radio. And I'll put a link in the video. Um, now, the, the title's a little bit sensationalistic, and it's something that LBC has been doing a lot of recently, but they're not the only ones. I've seen it with The Independent. I've seen it in all sorts of media outlets. I, I don't particularly care for it. I think it's kind of dumbing down serious issues where they talk about so-and-so owns this person or shuts down this view or, in this case, eviscerates this opinion. Um, I I get what the argument is, but I just think it dumbs down serious issues. I don't like that approach to journalism. Anyway, um, LBC has a new presenter, um, Sankita Miska, who has come from the BBC, and she is now on LBC. And anyway, she had a caller, and I will um I will post a link to this. Um. And he, he simply went by Jerry from Lowestoft in Suffolk. The Jerry said that he uh, was a former soldier and he was a Boris Johnson supporter. But his whole angle in the call was to basically question Rishi Sunak's Britishness and his patriotism. And I'm not going to um, go through the whole stage by stage of every part of the call, but I think uh, Sangeeta Maiska who uh, was born, I believe, in Tanzania, but of Indian, Anglo-Indian background, if I've got that right. And it was, she, um, I think she was very patient in how she dealt with this. She didn't just come out and say, oh, you're a racist or something like that, but she she challenged these very revealing comments that the guy was making. Now, his attitude was basically, um, Sunak isn't British enough. And he's not patriotic enough. This is despite the fact that this man rose to be Chancellor of the Exchequer of the United Kingdom. Um, his support for businesses has been lauded 
during the pandemic, and he correctly predicted what would happen with Liz Truss's budget. Now, I want to be clear here. I'm not a Conservative. I'm not a Tory member. And Rishi Sunak's a Tory. There's going to be areas I disagree with him on uh, in his last campaign, um, because this is all condensed. These are barely even campaigns. You know, they're not. there's not going to be the same drawn-out protests as before. But in his last campaign, he said something about charging patients who, you know, um, miss appointments. I think that was a bit absurd because it disregarded the individual circumstances that people might be in. And it wasn't a two-way street whereby, you know, patients might have their appointments cancelled by, by doctors. So I thought it was just a bit of tokenism. But in other areas, I think Sunak was quite a good chancellor. He did bring out the furlough scheme. He did help businesses during that pandemic. I remember uh, in Weatherspoon's uh, Sunak specials, you know, where things were, where, where um, pub meals were half price. Um, I do think it made a difference. I do think Sunak deserves credit for that. But um, this call was quite revealing. Now, the guy said that uh, the people he knows all think this way. And he was saying uh, it doesn't matter you know, where you're born, it, it gets into an issue of, um, because she correctly pointed out that Boris Johnson was born in New York City. Um, Rishi Sunak was born in Southampton. But um, the guy was saying it doesn't matter where you were born, it's this, he's not white British. And the whole angle he was going at was just, um, in my opinion, odious. And it was racist, basically. Because I agree with some good uh, get I mean, what does someone have to do to prove the Britishness to someone like that? Um, now, he mentioned the issues about the non-dom thing on Sunak's wife. Now, that would be a legitimate point of contention. There has been controversy around that. But if he just stuck to that, fine. So why bring race into it? Um, he claims that Sunak was, um, he's got more American and Indian roots than British. But this is a man who's got to the top of British politics. He was elected by his constituents. And he, you know, he has repeatedly stated his admiration and affection for this country. He is, you know, he's been involved in public life for years. And I just think it, it, this reeks of the sort of birtherism that was going around Obama's election. Now, I'm not saying Rishi Sunak is Britain's Obama. I think the circumstances are very different. I think in another, on another occasion, if, if Sunak was an opposition leader, I think we'd be seeing him as Britain's Obama. But because the Tories are in such a mess, he's just another person who could potentially be taken over from our shortest ever prime minister. Incidentally, some sources are saying uh, Truss had a 44-day premiership Technically, that's not true. She is still technically Prime Minister. And if there's some big, um, say, terrorist attack or something, she would be the one who has to handle it, even now. So they're going from a point of a resignation, but technically her premiership will be a little bit longer. I reckon altogether 48, 53 days, depending on what happens tomorrow. Um, I am pleased that the Tories this time have made it condensed and it's not going to be a long, drawn-out affair. Goodness knows we don't need that. But this question of, you know, someone cannot be British if they're, well, let's be blunt, they're not white. I think it is racist because, you know, if someone is born in this country, they grow up in this country, they enter public life in this country, they show affection for this country, what more do they have to do to show that they're British. I think that's absurd. Um, I mean, he, he made this analogy that he had a friend who was born in Uganda, a white friend, but does that make him, him an African? No, it doesn't. Well, white South Africans might consider themselves, certainly the Afrikaners um, would call themselves that, but I think that, um, you know, this question of someone's nationality, um, People might say, well, it's just a document on a piece of paper, but I think if someone has grown up in a country, you know, it's, you could have someone, let me make this analogy, you could have a black Briton or an Asian Briton who has grown up in this country, been in public life, you know, they've, maybe they've served in the armed forces or they've served in the police or they've been a politician or you name it, they've been in some other 
very British institution. Maybe they work for Royal Mail, whatever it could be. Um, and, you know, they, they could be a lot more associated with the country than, say, a white immigrant who's just arrived and maybe has limited English. So associating it with race, I think, is a big mistake. Um, me, what is Britishness? It is basically if someone, it, it's not a simple thing to answer, but it certainly isn't this crude sort of, yeah, well, only if you're white. We are a diverse country, and it's true that it's we've become more diverse in the 20th century onwards, but actually uh, new information is now emerging, archaeological and indeed genetic information, that in fact even ancient Britons may have been more diverse than we realise. So this isn't about being politically correct, it's just the reality. Britain is an ethnically diverse country. So this idea that we exclude all people who aren't white as, well, they're just, they're not really British, strikes me as absurd. Um, there will be people who are ethnic minorities who aren't British because they don't have British citizenship, because they've been here for a short time, whatever the case may be. Um, but I, I, I think there's something quite um, bigoted about just excluding people because they're not white. Um, and yet it's racist. Now, there's Indian networks that have long play, played up this thing like, oh, Sunak wasn't elected because the British are racist. And I got quite defensive about that, even angry, because I thought, well, that's, that's the smear on this country. But maybe, um, and, and by the way, I do think the Conservatives have come a long way. I really do. Johnson deserves some credit for having the most diverse cabinet ever. Um, people could criticise policies, but it was a diverse cabinet, at least in terms of demographics. Um, and that's been consistent. The Tories are actually a very diverse party right now. But, so, so I think they've come a long way on that. You know, we are in a very, very different place in 2022 from the world where there were open signs saying no blacks and no Irish. I do think in the past there was some naked, ugly racism in this country. But I think it would be wrong to say it's totally gone. I do think there is some racist sentiments out there. And it's very sad and it's very pathetic in the year 2022. Now, I believe we need to have tough immigration rules in the sense of, um, you know, we have to vet who's coming in. And I think that people who, for example, are going to support hostile foreign regimes, I think we should definitely vet such people. Um, I think we should vet, for example, Islamists people who would be sympathetic to Islamist ideology. I think uh, some Chinese nationals who might be here to sort of do the dirty work of the CCP. There are areas where we need to vet people, but I do not believe in just pulling up the drawbridge or having this rudimentary um, thing about determining someone's value to the country based on well, this one thing I don't like about the Tories is this idea that their monetary value is what matters. Um, you know, having this threshold for someone coming in. I mean, I, I get the argument so that they're not reliant on the welfare system and putting more pressure on that, but um, I would argue that a Filipina nurse is more valuable to this country than a Russian oligarch who may have Putin ties as an example. Oh, we do need to, every country, you know, has a right to have a fundamental protection of its borders. So we, I believe in, a, I said a tough immigration system. I'll rephrase that, just a fair one. Um, you know, I neither go to the sort of hard right, which is pull up the drawbridge and, you know, just totally cut off immigration completely. That's absurd. It isn't going to happen. But I think the hard left is deluded. I don't think, for example, foreign criminals should be in this country. But anyway, I digress. I digress. Um, I think there's a very strong chance that Rishi Sunak will be a 57th Prime Minister. And I think those Tories who support Johnson, they are, you know, some of them are quite intelligent people. James Cleverly, I've got respect for, the Foreign Secretary. Ben Wallace, um, maybe, I, I don't know what it is, I'm disappointed to see them support Duncan because this is a man that only two months ago the Tories got rid of, basically, who should 
next to no remorse for his actions, who um, is being investigated right now. Now, Sunak doesn't come across squeaky clean in this regard either. He was also fined over party gate. So actually, in that sense, the ideal candidate would be Penny Morden. But she simply doesn't have enough support. So I think Sunak is going to be our next prime minister. I think this idea that Johnson should be given another chance. Uh, I mean, OK, Winston Churchill did in 1951, Harold Wilson did in 1974, but this idea that they could just, uh, you know, to disregard Johnson's record of sleaze, I think it would be a slap in the face of the British public. And these Johnson loyalists, these Johnson cultists, you know, dare I say it, I think it is a bit of a personality cult around him. They're, they're really short-sighted. They're thinking he's good for the party and he's what we want. But are they really thinking about the wider public? I mean, they keep talking about he has the mandate from 2019. And yes, he secured a comfortable general election victory, but a lot has happened in 2019. I'm not so sure that the people who voted for Boris Johnson in 2019 and, for example, red wall seats, I'm not sure there'll be overwhelming enthusiasm for him today. So this idea will bring back Boris in order to win the general election just strikes me as incredibly short-sighted. I believe Rishi Sunak is probably the best answer the Tories have right now. I think Penny Mordaunt's a serious candidate. I think, you know, I was going to say she could be a unity candidate, but the truth is there isn't really a unity candidate right now. And there are some in the in Tory ranks who question Penny Mordaunt's pandering to um, some left-wing ideology, particularly around trans issues. I don't think it's, in the grand scheme of things, I don't think it's the most important issue, but that might go against her. But I think she's a serious candidate, and I think one of the biggest mistakes Liz Truss made was not having any of her opponents in her cabinet. She was just surrounded by yes men and yes women. So I think if Rishi Sunak becomes prime minister, it would make sense for him to have Boris Johnson in his cabinet to appease the Johnson supporters. Uh, to have Penny Morden in his cabinet. Uh, and I think he's practical enough to do that. But I am going to cautiously say Rishi Sunak is going to be our 57th Prime Minister. And notwithstanding the current political situation, it will be historic. There's no way to gloss it over. This will be a historic moment. He will be uh, King Charles III's first appointment as Prime Minister, but he will also be our first British Asian Prime Minister. That's historic. It will be a big, big event in that sense. An Obama moment, maybe not, because the circumstances are different. But, you know, 300 years of prime ministerial history, our first Asian prime minister, it's a big thing. I think it is a big thing. It will be historic. And it also means that those nationalistic Indian networks can no longer say, oh, the British didn't elect, elect Sunak. Not that it would be the wider public electing him, it would be Tory MPs, but nevertheless, um, he will have got to the top of the greasy pole of British politics, and yeah, I think it's going to happen. Um, at this point, I'd be surprised if Johnson gets re-elected. I think there's too much on ease in Tory ranks about him. Any more than this controversial, but I don't think she's going to get it. I'm cautiously um, going to say that Rishi Sunak is going to win. Maybe not tomorrow, maybe there will be a bit of a contest between him and Johnson, but it's historic. It really is. Okay, let me know your thoughts and I'll put a link to the video, but I just think the whole angle that Jerry from um, Lowestoft was going down was just wrong. If he just focused on policy and Sunak's record, that would be fine. I don't think there's anything wrong with criticising Sunak, but it's this business of tying it into race, I just think it's very... Um, I think it is bigoted, quite honestly.